Because without consistency, you'll never reach your full potential. Daniel Jones, at his best, the ceiling, there is no ceiling for him. Because he had a historic playoff performance with a practice squad offense. <laughs> The anointed one has spoken, okay? Daniel Jones has spoken, and damn it, I'm listening. So, Daniel Jones came out and said in a recent interview that he's played at a high level. He's played, he's been an elite quarterback, he's done it before, he knows what it takes to do it, and he just needs to be that on a consistent level. And he believes he's got the guys to do that now. And you know what I said? You know what the first thing that came to my mind was? Eli Manning. I love Eli to death. I think Eli is a first ballot Hall of Famer. But Eli was only great in the playoffs. It was hard for Eli to get to the playoffs because he wasn't a good regular season quarterback. Which is why Eli Manning finished with a 500 record but he's one of only like three quarterbacks or two Super Bowl MVPs. So, I had a little flashback of Eli Manning being good enough to beat Tom Brady and Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, but not being good enough to beat Romo or Kirk Cousins for the East. I had flashbacks. Danny... You have to become consistent. Because without consistency, you'll never reach your full potential. Daniel Jones, at his best, the ceiling, there is no ceiling for him. Because he had a historic playoff performance with a practice squad offense. Daniel Jones went on the road to Minnesota and had a historically great playoff performance with nothing. There was no Malik Neighbors. There was no Jalen Hyatt. He had nothing but bum-ass Saquon back there. That's it. He, that guy was a top-five quarterback. That was the guy who I want to see. Damn, what if he had Malik Neighbors? What if he had Theo Johnson? What if he had Wondell Robinson? Because Wondell Robinson was injured that year. Remember, he tore his ACL versus Detroit. Daniel Jones, at his best, is a top-five quarterback. And that's with no weapons. So if we could get that version of Daniel Jones to come back and play with this revamped offensive line and this set of wide receivers with Brian Dable calling the plays, the sky is the limit for Daniel Jones. That's what I believe. That's what I believe Daniel Jones can be. But the problem is Daniel Jones has to prove he can be consistent. Daniel Jones has to prove he can stay healthy. So you can have all the potential in the world, but if you're not available, it don't matter. Derrick Rose was supposed to be that dude, but he was always hurt. Joel Embiid is supposed to be the next Shaq, but he's always hurt. It doesn't matter how good Daniel Jones is or could be if he can't stay healthy. Eli Manning never missed a game due to injury. The only time Eli Manning missed a game is when he got benched for Geno Smith. Eli Manning never missed a game. Brett Favre never missed a game in Green Bay. The best ability is availability, Danny. I rock with everything Daniel Jones said. I do. I rock with everything he said. But, bruh. You got to stay healthy, man. You, you got to stay healthy. Like it's, I can't go through another season of a broke neck, torn ACL, shoulder issues, high ankle sprains. I mean, damn, bro. Like, I had 16 years of Eli Manning. 
I ain't never had to wake up and wonder if my quarterback was going to play. I knew Eli was going to play. I need that from Danny, man. I, I, I need that from him. But at the end of the day, yo, like, I know a lot of people hate that comment that Daniel Jones made. But Joe Shane said it too. Joe Shane said, listen, if Daniel Jones has played at a top five level. We just need him to be consistent. That's, it's, 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 we saw it last year. Last year, he had the Arizona game. And then he went back to being a pumpkin. So it's like, if we could get Arizona Daniel Jones for 16, 17 games, we'll be fine. If we could get road playoff game Daniel Jones for a whole season, we'll be fine. But if we get, I'm going to throw 10 touchdowns and 17 games, Daniel Jones, we're not going to be fine. And he ain't going to be fine because he's going to get benched. But I agree with the overall statement from Danny, and I'm glad Daniel Jones feels that way. I'm glad Daniel Jones believes he's an elite quarterback because you have to believe in yourself in order to be great. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. So I'm happy Daniel Jones is pissed off. I'm happy Daniel Jones wants to prove the front office wrong. I'm happy he don't like the fact that they wanted to draft Drake May at Jaden Daniels. I'm happy. I want Daniel Jones to piss. I want Daniel Jones to be so pissed off that he going to say, fuck Fisk Vicious. Fisk, you was my number one fan. You turned your back on me. Fuck you. I would love for Daniel Jones to come out and say that. Be mad at me. Because if I got fed up with you, imagine what the dudes who wasn't rocking with you felt like. So at the end of the day, man, like, Daniel Jones is still my guy. I just, <sighs> I still rock with Danny. It's just one of those situations where, like, he owe me. He owes this fan base. It's not just me. He owes this fan base. He owes that front office. Daniel Jones owes us a great season. Because I don't give a damn how bad the offensive line is. That still doesn't excuse how pathetic Daniel Jones played. The interception versus Seattle. All the check downs versus the 49ers on Thursday night football. Just being a complete and utter bum versus the Dolphins in October when I went to that game. Like, there was just performances from Danny that were just inexcusable. Bad O-line and no bad O-line. Daniel Jones played like some stir fry last year. He owes us. You can't take that money and play that bad. Daniel Jones has to rebound and live up to that contract in 2024 or he's out of here. It's as simple as that. But anyway, that's it, that's all. Hit the like button, hit that sub button, drop F views in the comments if you rockin' with me, and stay vicious. Dismiss. <laughs>